My name is Kaisa Volainen. I work as, as a research professor at the Finnish Institute of Occupational Health. I have a medical background and I work at the Institute uh, as the director of Nanosafety Research Center. At an EU level, uh, the Institute has been the coordinating organization of Nanosafety Cluster uh, from 2011 to 2016 or 17 and uh, I've been the coordinating person uh, during that time period. So we've been coordinating the collaboration of about uh, 50 uh, EU projects worth 180 million euros during that time period. Now, of course, the main target of nanosafety research is to make sure that uh, we are able to uh, safely handle engineer nanomaterials. And uh, to be able to do that, we, we, we should be able to uh, assess reliably the hazards of these materials and also reliably assess the exposure of workers uh, to these materials. And here we still have many, many things to do, a long way to go. Uh, we, uh, we have already now means to do uh, uh, safety assessment and, and regulate safety, but it could and it should be much better. So uh, I would see as one of the important targets to, uh, to start designing safety already on the desk when you plan for a new nanomater engineer nanomaterial. So start assuring safety uh, already at the design state. As I indicated, it would be important to um, uh, start considering safety when you design the new nanomaterial because they are designed, designed by engineers like uh, buildings by architects on, on the desk. And uh, one, it, it would be important that one would also be able to predict the possible transformations of nanomaterials during their different stages of their life, life, life cycle, so that those could be also considered in designing the new materials. And this would, uh, in fact, save a lot of money for the producers, uh, save a lot of work for the scientists and regulators, and I think also increase trust by, uh, uh, by the consumers and also industrial uh, users of the nanomaterials. So I'm a corporate product safety toxicologist for Solvay. It means that I'm typically assessing the risk of materials, among them nanomaterials. Within the group, I'm also in charge of all transversal actions for nanomaterials. And Solvay in the world of nanotechnology is a producer and a formulator of nanomaterials. So the current platform we have is we have defined a committee, a transversal committee with multiple actors. Um, for all nanomaterials we are producing, we are generating data to be sure on the safety of what we are placing on the market. For nanomaterials which are on the research and innovation steps, uh, we have uh, a tiered approach, meaning that we are generating more and more information based on identified topic of concerns if identified. The first step, meaning the creation, the ideation of a materials, it's completely free. Let's go for ideation. And then, um, quite rapidly, we have the gener generation of first non-regulatory compliant methods, but highly predictable one. Um, my name is Van Kerko Hunter. I am the health safety lead manager of uh, Oxial. Uh, his headwaters is uh, I'm the health safety lead manager of Oxial, uh, who has a headquarters located in uh, uh, Luxembourg and a an, uh, big research and development center located in Novosibirsk. Uh, we are, for the moment, uh, the largest uh, production uh, manufacturer of uh, single wall carbon nanotubes. We initiate a lot of uh, independent uh, uh, researchers. Uh, we have a lot of cooperations with uh, different kind of institutes. Uh, it's not only for commercial purposes, but it's also to give uh, uh, to ease the concerns of any kind of customer. Uh, 
on the aspects of health, safety and even environmental. Um, it's very important that we collect the necessary data, that we take the lead, because single wall carbon nanotubes concerning this kind of type of substance, there's not much data available. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, literature uh, research and we came up with things that could give a little value um, for us uh, to proceed in this direction, in the good direction. Uh, but already we invested and we are planning a lot, uh, especially this year. We initiate a lot of projects uh, meanwhile and we have a lot of things uh, to be started up also this year. Probably with some delay it will be 2019, 2020. So we have a lot of things on our task list. Eventually uh, we have a lot of uh, big customers. Um, who we have a lot of contact with and we are starting up a lot of research and uh, create um, investigations to collect the necessary data that they can start internally a lot of um, necessary things to be done to make it possible to produce their specific articles. It's a wide range, we have elastomers, thermoplastic, thermosets and you need to see it case by case. Um, Eventually we've done also a little part of the uh, life cycle, that was the embrasion uh, testing. They were very positive. Uh, it's shown that our nanomaterial is even improving the mechanical strength of any kind of polymer. Um, the polymers that we used and um, of the different kinds, but also it's shown that it was completely encapsulated in the polymer and this gives also a very good indication that eventually the recycling part would have not much worry. But this is the focus that we will have in the next coming months. Recycling is very important. How would it fit and what effect it would have for the environment and for all the involved persons for recycling. Eventually we have a lot of uh, corporations going on with, with customers who have, because they are quite uh, large companies and they have their own protocol to follow. So when we need to take the necessary steps to make uh, a good improvement on commercial base, we are cooperating with a lot of projects with those customers and we are collecting the necessary data to have, uh, um, to have the, the, the <coughs> to ease the concerns of those customers. I started my career in IMEC uh, 12 years ago and uh, I've been responsible for biosafety and nanosafety uh, aspects of, of research since about four years. Uh, so in 2016 uh, we launched the NanoStream project which is a major focus on my activities uh, nowadays. But I also have some operational responsibilities, as I mentioned, in uh, practically doing risk assessments related to the use of nanomaterials in early R&D uh, development. Uh, so maybe to introduce uh, my institution, uh, IMEC is one of the largest research uh, centers worldwide for uh, nanoelectronics, which means that we deal with a lot of uh, materials that are tested for their applications within uh, semiconductor industry, specifically uh, in energy applications, in, in core CMOS, in imaging, and also in life science uh, applications in terms of medical devices. We are very much um, concerned about uh, the well-being of our uh, workforce. Uh, so typically it means that the uh, material is screened for all of their toxic uh, properties and we also look how a certain material can interact uh, with other materials in the processing chain. And the, the nanomaterial aspects come um, from the application as such and then we also look at the uh, processing conditions. Now uh, the problem about nanomaterial uh, research and, and development risk assessment is that um, the process parameters change quite a bit until the final recipe has been uh, fixed. So that requires multiple uh, revisions, also changing, uh, sometimes changing equipment. 
so this is this is basically how we approach in early R and D stages. I think my colleagues from from the industry can explain how the uh, late R and D or, or process safety in regular application is is approached. Well, the NanoStream project uh, has several objectives related to the use of nanomaterials. Uh, first of all, we want to collect information about how nanomaterials are being used at the moment and be able to uh, propose suitable risk assessment tools. Uh, secondly, uh, we collect reference information about tools uh, in, in terms of measurement devices that are useful for actually characterizing emissions and characterizing um, um, nanomaterials that are produced accidentally. Uh, and finally, it's also about the training and internal communication uh, towards the, the workforce. And also, uh, finally, communicating the results to uh, external stakeholders like regulators. I'm Pascal Antonio from uh, I'm a Chief Operating Officer of the NAS Laboratory is a nanoscience and nanotechnology lab of the Scuola Normale Superiore. Scuola Normale Superiore is a small university, high quality level, but it's quite small. And we, of course, are involved in nanoscience and nanotechnology. Our research activity is uh, required to, to manage nanomaterials. And at the end, we, we collaborate with the other institutions in order to, to make, make some risk assessment of nanomaterials. The basic idea was to use a control banding model and to add something new for the moment, that uh, the fact that we are able to, to measure the exposure of the workers at the workplace. And this was nice because uh, at the end we obtained some very nice results re regarding the different steps in nanomaterials fabrication and uh, grow uh, in our facility. And we are able to, to deeply understand what's happening during the fabrication process. Yeah, we are involved in particular in nanowires and graphene. And uh, I can say that uh, in our lab, we, I mean, we produce a very small amount of these materials. So for us, uh, the priority is to use the, in a proper way the, the um, collective protective equipment, equipment the, the personal protective equipment. And this is very important for our researchers. Of course, more in general, if you want to, to manage uh, the, the risk, you have to, to think in terms of, uh, if you want to introduce these materials in the in semiconductor industry, you have to to use something new. And uh, I, 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 I think that uh, the worker exposure is very important, the measurement, the direct measurement on, on the semiconductor industry point of view, and also the communication with the stakeholders. It's crucial to have some uh, good communication, otherwise you have some warning, and uh, at the end the w you will have some stops on the production. In our lab, the production of these two kinds of materials is very small amount. So, the main point is that if you use a personal protective equipment and a collective protect, protective equipment in the proper way, we have no problem for our works. So we demonstrated in the project that it's, uh, in, uh, with the exp um, exposure or the uh, measurement, you can be sure that nothing is uh, critical from this point of view. But if you want to increase the amount of uh, nanomaterials, like graphene and nanowires, in particular nanowires because are fibers, in the semiconductor industry, probably you need to extend this kind of approach, so measuring the exposure of the worker in the workplace, and also you have to be more careful in the communication. You have to increase the communication with the stakeholders, you have to, to increase the, I mean, the, the, the relationship with the stakeholders in order to avoid any warnings on this side and avoiding any stop on your production. We had some experience in, from the past that say that, uh, and I, I have to say in other ways too, that say that the, before starting any industrial process, probably we have to think in terms of a life cycle assessment. And uh, I think, it, for example, to asbesto, or to a laptop, or to CRT screens, or uh, mobile phones, we have no idea how to manage the complete life cycle assessment. And of course, for nanomaterials, this is crucial. So I suppose we have to start to think in terms of uh, the, this assessment uh, for nanomaterials, also starting from, uh, I can say, um, an approach that is safety by design um, uh, 
in particular for uh, consumers. Pascal, uh, I'm in charge of the corporate environment and earth for uh, STM Microelectronics, uh, and I'm a member, of course, of the NanoStream uh, project. A uh, few words about ST Microelectronics. Uh, we are a semiconductor company uh, billing uh, $8.3 billion uh, uh, last year, so 45,000 employees worldwide and uh, dealing with manufacturing sites worldwide and including six in, uh, in Europe, so France, Italy and uh, in Malta, uh, which is dealing. So what, what we are doing is making semiconductors, many products in many focus, especially for automotive and Internet of Things, which are uh, the key drivers for, for leading the semiconductors industry. Uh, we are present everywhere, everywhere from, of course, many, many applications that uh, we all have in our pocket, from smartphone, from driving, from your car, etc. So definitely, uh, my job part of uh, the NanoStream was uh, to, 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 to as, an, as an industrial partner, uh, to, be, uh, to be one of the, uh, of the providing some elements of what we are doing and especially using within your fabs in order to control and to better control the risk that we could have with the chemicals, including with the nanomaterials. So, as I said this morning in my presentation, clearly we need risk assessment tool. Alors, first of all, why? We know that uh, we are using chemicals to making a product, to making a process within our manufacturing sites. And since a while, we are managing, of course, uh, responsibly, let's say, uh, towards, of course, our workers and towards the environment, uh, all these chemicals. But as uh, we know more and more, we are introducing more and more new chemicals which contain nanomaterial. A and clearly, uh, what is important for us is to make sure that we will continue to properly manage uh, this kind of, uh, of risk, this new risk. And we know that if we do not have so much uh, risk assessment uh, properties or tools, uh, there is a risk that it could be make some barrier to innovation. Because when we have some doubt about the risk, when we are not enough clear about what kind of risk we, we can have, uh, we can uh, have some precaution, precautionary principle, which is of course uh, well known and good, but in some time it could let's say blocked or at least limit the innovation. And for us, the innovation within the semiconductors is absolutely key uh, to make business. We clear, we definitely need to make business with innovative product. And innovative product means, again, innovative processes, innovative material, and for sure, innovative techniques as well to put the product on the market. So having a risk assessment is definitely a, a key point uh, in order to continue to be there, to be, to be performance, of course, to be efficient on, the, uh, on all our, our different processes and to avoid to be trapped, let's say, by, by uh, too much, uh, let's say, problems that could be limit the, the, the innovation. So one, it was definitely one of the interests of uh, the NanoStream project in order to make sure that we can continue to innovate that's again the goal of uh, a company like ours, but of course being responsible again towards environment and towards people. So life cycle approach, uh, let's say that again uh, in the context of the history of the semiconductors, we have a pretty on the bracket good tools uh, uh, on, and regulations to Again, starting from raw material down to recycling process. I can talk about conflict-free minerals, uh, that it's now definitely well defined. Of course, we have REACH, we have ROHS, so plenty of regulation and good tool in order to assess uh, during, again, the whole life cycle. But, but uh, and again, it was one of the key discussions that we had this morning, the problem is that when we are trading, again, introducing, sorry, new material like nanomaterial inside uh, the, the chemicals, it's clear that uh, we do not have all time all the requested informations about, again, the risk, the tox toxicity, uh, any kind of potential damage that we can generate towards our people, or earth of people, which is, of course, the, the key first priority, and, of course, the, the, the environment. So the life cycle approach is for sure definitely is the right approach, but again, uh, we need to, to have much more go further, having more information, more risk uh, uh, definitions, let's say, in order for new, for new material, which again, you are using on daily basis inside your process. So even if, again, we are not producing nanomaterial, but you are using, and we are using it. And releasing, releasing uh, for consumer use, for example, or even if your products are not directly uh, 
uh, let's say, in touch with, uh, with the consumer, because of course our product is used uh, within uh, applications. But definitely it's very important to have uh, every maximum of information how to manage this risk. So the challenge is how to get, how to get all this, again, information, uh, especially for toxic ones, because again, a few ones are toxic, and uh, we have seen this morning that uh, we are progressing, we are progressing, but it's definitely the challenge. And based on the number of new nanomaterials which are put on the market every year, uh, with the exponential increase, uh, this is really the challenge. So for sure, we need, we need to continue to manage this, uh, as we do in the past for chemicals. But, of course, we have the specificities of, the, of these nano properties, nanomaterial properties. So I'm George Catalagarianaik, so I work in the European Commission. You said uh, the Directorate General for Research, the nanotechnology program, and I'm behind this whole nano safety uh, program that this day is all about. So that's about uh, 25 million uh, euro per year program, and um, it's a world class. We have a very considerable international cooperation on this, and it really affects a very big amount of sectors in uh, industry. So that's what I do. In general, now technology is uh, really a, a, a number of technologies. It's not only one, which address many sectors, the classical industrial materials, but also food, cosmetics, uh, biocides, the pharma industry, medical devices. So a whole industry is using our technology and progressing from, it, from this. So we hope that we'll industrialize Europe again, uh, make technologies that will profit for the citizen and the society, and uh, assist in this way the well-being and the progress, technological progress, all over Europe. Uh, now materials and nanotechnologies in general are a new set of technologies which are very, very promising. They affect a number of sectors, uh, like the industrial materials one, like food, uh, cosmetics, biocides, pharma industry, medical devices. So all these come together. The, the whole effort is expected to help industrialize Europe again and in this way promote the well-being, promote employment and technological progress all over Europe. The potential risk from these now technologies, as a matter of fact from any new technologies, is something that is far better to address in the beginning than at the end. Imagine if you built this building and after finishing it, you ask if it is earthquake safe. Uh, that's not logical. You built it so that it's earthquake safe. And the same applies for fire safety and the same applies for a number of other electricity or gas installation. They are all managed in the same way. So we built our materials and our processes safe from start. And for nano, because they are nano, because they are new, we need to learn how to do it. It's not easy, it's not simple, it needs science, it needs technology, but that's why we are here for. As I say, Fiona Moclair, I'm in our corporate environmental health and safety organisation, a uh, little over 21 years in the company now. Um, I suppose my day-to-day -day role or my core function is that I'm an environmental health and safety advisor within our advocacy team. So a lot of my team members we uh, will be based in the likes of uh, Munich and also here in uh, Brussels. Well, I think really where nanomaterials are from an industrial perspective is that they're still seen as a very novel material. Um, so I would have to say the first step we would have to take would be literally identifying who would be those EHS professionals that we effectively would have to basically get them trained in nanomaterials. Because, you know, we, we know at this point that you just cannot uh, do a direct transfer in terms of the ability to do a chemical EHS risk assessment at a bulk level and just directly transfer that to nanomaterials. So there's, there's a learning that would need to be there in place for those folks. I'd have to say, and I suppose I'm not unique in saying this, that it should be there from day one. Now, in practical terms, that's not going to happen. But if I look at my own company, we would have folks that would be involved in basically new materials in components research and, you know, 
after that, then you'd have technology development, technology transfer, and then high volume manufacturing. So the, you know, the earlier up you can go in that chain, the better. So I would say my step one would be basically components research. So I'm Ties Oosterijk indeed. I work at TNO uh, as a project officer and business developer in the field of uh, nano risk government. I've worked in uh, several EU projects, among which uh, the NanoRec project, NanoRec2, Guide Nano, Easy for Safe Nano, and NanoStream. And uh, we do also a lot of consultancy for, uh, for industry. And uh, with our roadmap at TNO, we intend to, to help the transfer of uh, nanotechnology IP to direct applications in the market and in society. In, in my experience, uh, industry needs practical approaches to deal with uh, nanomaterial risk assessment. Um, that starts with uh, uh, getting the right data, getting good exposure and hazard assessment data. Um, that's still not available on, on the MSDSs, for example, which is a, a tool that they normally use for collecting this data. And they need help with the interpretation of these complex data to say something about the risks that they are dealing with uh, within their companies. In my opinion, uh, as soon as possible in the R&D process, um, that is for the protection of workers in the R&D process that are dealing with uh, potentially hazardous substances. Um, I see the difficulties there in, in sharing this kind of knowledge, even with departments uh, in their own companies, because of uh, disclosure of information from the R&D uh, uh, departments. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's really important. Uh, for the protection of uh, R&D personnel. On the, uh, and the second point is that it's also important because of uh, the investment that is done in many R&D uh, projects. Uh, it would be a shame if you invest a lot of money on an R&D project which eventually results in a pro product that uh, cannot reach the market because of health and safety issues. My name is Joris Quick, I, I'm from RVM. And uh, my expertise is on expo environmental exposure assessment of, uh, of chemicals, but nanomaterials in specific. That was, let's say, the topic of my uh, PhD. And uh, mainly my expertise is on, on fate modeling of nanomaterials and a bit on, on data and, uh, and, and data availability and what data you need to do eventually exposure assessment and, and risk assessment. And uh, as uh, the RVM, we, we, we are uh, aimed at, at connecting research, science and, and policy makers, but also other stakeholders. For that we have a, a knowledge and information point on, uh, on risks of nanomaterials. And one of the things we do, for example, is, uh, is write, uh, at, yeah, actively write to policy or policy uh, or ministry actually uh, uh, about recent research and translate it to, in a way, that what is the impact, what is actually uh, going on. And we do that for, for directly for policy, but also for the general public and other stakeholders. We also have a, a public letter in that sense that we write uh, uh, four times a year. And we've been doing this for quite some time. And I think that is one of the yeah, contributions of RVM in risk governance of uh, nanomaterials. So Simple Box for Nano is an adaptation of a, a, a fate model uh, already uh, implemented more or less in, in regulations, uh, simple box, and uh, it, it works in a, in a similar way, only the, the input parameters and the way the, the processes are, are, are modeled uh, change because nanomaterials are a specific group of materials, uh, they are particles which behave differently to uh, conventional chemicals and in that sense we had to make some, some changes, uh, nanoparticles uh, uh, interact differently with other particles and so on than, than uh, uh, conventional chemicals. So that is at least the, 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 uh, the reason we made Simple Box for Nano. But of course this also means that other aspects of the whole exposure assessment uh, and, and, and the end risk assessment uh, uh, scheme steps need to be changed. You also need to have nanomaterial specific uh, emission uh, or release estimates. And also in the end for the risk characterization, you need to be able to compare these predicted environmental concentrations of nanomaterials to the proper uh, effect thresholds. Uh. Um, I'm a toxicologist working at LATAT. Uh, LATAT is a technological centre, it's a private, uh, private uh, technological centre with more than 100 years experience in, in, in innovation, industrial innovation processes. 
and has uh, different areas of expertise. One of them is, is the development of nanotechnologies for a wide range of applications. And another part is on the safety assessment of chemicals. So we make those two areas converge into the nano safety uh, group that was, uh, was born around 10 years ago. And, and since then, we've participated in several projects uh, on this area. And we continue with this activity. Uh, the Guy Nano tool was designed actually to help uh, users uh, conducting risk assessment of nanomaterials and products containing nanomaterials and to identify risk mitigation measures that, that would be necessary in each case. And, and the tool can help industry in, in compiling the data that they need to, to do this assessment and, and on the steps that need to be followed uh, to get to, to a at least a preliminary conclusion on the basis of, of such data. And we are aware that, especially in the, in the early stages of development, there are, there are data gaps, but uh, the tool can handle that by, by using some defaults or some assumptions that, uh, that they can, it can still generate some kind of preliminary assessment. Well, early stage uh, risk assessment is important so that if there is any potential risk this, that, that the necessary measures are taken to avoid it, if there is still room for, for design. Uh, one thing that needs to be understood is nanomaterials are highly dynamic and their properties are likely to change uh, through their life cycle. So depending on their use and the end of life uh, that uh, that will occur for that material, their properties will change and with their properties also their risks. So in a risk assessment of nanomaterials, it's unlikely that we'll be handling a single material. It will be a series of nanoforms, which are the ones that could uh, occur during its life cycle. And, and this is necessary, otherwise we'll be missing part of the, of the potential risk. My name is uh, Kjell Astrup Jensen and I'm a professor at the National Research Center for the Working Environment in Copenhagen in Denmark. And we are a national lab under the Ministry of Employment and uh, we have a relatively large group that works on, on nano safety. We are about 40 people who have this as a focus covering every aspect from the toxicology of, of nanomaterials and products the exposure assessment, the characterization of the products and nanomaterials, as well as uh, the uh, integrated risk assessment. Uh, in that aspect, we also produce uh, risk assessment tools, especially with focus on control banding tools. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we have a lot of effort in generating the background data, so basically the hard data on toxicology and exposure to try and, and establish a big data repository on, on these aspects so we can use that for, for the risk assessment and improving our methodologies to do predictive risk assessment. And uh, the, these are elements in, uh, in government governance, so they are the basic foundation as we see it for enabling a trustworthy governance is that we have trust in the risk assessment methods which are based on, on a documenta a documentation with data. Um, when it comes to Governance, we are coordinator of the Calibrate project, uh, which I have been running now for two years. And uh, this is uh, really one of our efforts to try and translate what we have learned over 10 years of research up to the, to the governance level. So the Calibrate project is constructed to, uh, first of all, try and translate all the uh, lessons, uh, the knowledge that has been generated in the nano safety research with a big focus on the European research projects that has been conducted over more than 10 years, um, as well as the national knowledge that has been generated. And we try, based on that, to see what elements can be used for risk assessment and for governance. Um, the whole project is uh, trying to construct a um, systems of systems risk governance framework, which can be used both for the innovation of uh, safe nanomaterials and products, but also post-market where it can be useful for industries downstream to use uh, risk assessment tools that, un that underpins the, the governance framework. So we have a deliverance on creating the systems of systems framework at first, based on models, based on uh, knowledge, so based on guidance, based on methodologies. Um, and then we have a big task in pooling together all the data that has been generated over the years 
into databases. Um, we are not the only product doing that, but we have a big effort in trying to do that and qualify the data that are in there. And this data we use for testing of the models, the risk assessment methodologies in the US governance framework. So it's an essential part of establishing the framework is that we have this database development. <clears throat> then we also try to look forward, so come up with uh, new methodologies, what we call next generation risk governance or risk assessment methods, where we try to look into the use of a, a high throughput test system where you can use cell-based systems to understand what could be the potential hazard with the nanomaterial and predictive models for exposure assessment as well. So these are some of the elements that we, that we work with. 